Okay, there we are. We are uh, live uh, broadcasting with the uh, Precious Metals Hangout. Uh, the date is uh, 4 19 2013. I'm here with uh, Colin from uh, Gearology. How are you doing, Colin? I'm doing great, Rusty. How are you doing? Doing good. What a hell of a week, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's got a little, got a lot of people running to the bathroom a little bit more often than usual, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, last week we had a crash in the Bitcoin. Uh, this week we had a crash in gold and silver. Uh, bo both are alternative currencies. Uh, do you see any correlation to that in... Um, and the Fed's being desperate to save the dollar? Well, it's, uh, I think as you've said before, you know, coincidences are, uh, you know. I just, don't believe in them. You don't believe in them. So, you know, I, I know no. what your opinion is, and you probably are right. It's just, it's these, it's the whole thing, like with just even the manipulation of gold and silver, it's very hard to pin some facts down. And yeah, that's true. Connect and connect the dots, but otherwise, yeah, it's very fishy. It doesn't smell right. Well, that's why they call it naked shorting because you really can't <laughs> trace it. Yeah. Um, um, but they dumped, uh, I think, millions of ounces of paper silver onto the markets and gold as well. Crashed it down. Here, let's look at the. Um, well, I've even read it's like billions of ounces at one point, wasn't it? I think you're right. Can you see my screen in the silver chart? Let's see. Not yet. Oh, not yet, huh? Let's see here then. There we go. Here we go. All right. I figured it out. All right, so last time we spoke, we had this little uh, conversation about this little spot on the chart. This is a 60-minute chart on the silver. And I was mentioning this little spot right here where it had to choose, because all the moving averages were all being pinched together, uh, the price was going to have to choose whether or not it was going to go down or up, which uh, we all hoped it would have gone up. But... Yep. I think it was Sunday night, 3 a.m., no one watching. This thing dropped 11% all the way down to... Let me move this over a little bit. All the way down Sunday night. Is it better when I put this magnifying thing on there? What, what do you have it at now, 150 or so? I think it dropped Sunday night. Well, let's just go through the play here. It gapped open below 25. You can see that big gap in price here. Yep. It gapped open below that, and it went all the way down. Um, a touch $23 on um, Sunday night. No one watching. You know, just whatever they want to do. You can see the the MACD. I mean, compared to what normal is, you can see what happened. And I, so, I don't have the OB. I don't have the OB. The on balance volume open, but um, uh, so I can tell what was the amount of ounces, uh, paper ounces. But you can just tell from that chart, <clears throat> it, just a huge. Huge, uh, you know, no one, no one's awake, no one's watching. Yeah, the MACD just went down like crazy. You were awake watching that. That must have been fun. Yeah, I was watching it. I actually did a video because. Uh, did you see that video I posted? I don't think so. I'm afraid not. Uh, it was like 3 a.m. I was doing a little screencast. I was recording my screen. Um doing a live cast on the price going down and <clears throat> how upset I was. <laughs> I bet. 
Well, it's, I mean, the problem was with, you know, we know how these guys work, and they do it when there's no buyers and yeah. sellers around. And it's really you know, no, no mystery now. And unfortunately, all you, can, you can't do a dang thing about it. All you can do there is sit and watch it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know. Um, okay, so now that we have um, uh, consolidated over the week, um, this thing has dropped below. Uh, it's hit actually $22. Mm -hmm. And um, it's consolidating right now above the 50-day moving average. But if we go back to uh, a daily chart, this right here is a flag formation. Um, that is a, a, a bearish uh, formation. I uh, I imagine this thing going below that trend line um, the way that the week has consolidated. Um, okay. So we're we're going to see below twenty dollar prices. I no. that's what I that's what I think. Next week. Uh, not necessarily in a week. Um, but you know it, it doesn't matter. What whatever the spot price they want to push this paper to. Mm -hmm. um, we are we are in a situation, and I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, Let me well, we've, got, we, we, we've got a market Let that me, doesn't jive with uh, reality, and we all know that. Yeah, the, here we go. Okay, so it, here is what we're uh, talking about, the separation between paper and actual dealer prices. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit earlier, and we figured out at, uh, this is at Mex. Mm -hmm. Now, this is... This is the probably a little bit more expensive than uh, what you can actually get on the market, but we're just going to use this as an example. Um, they are selling at thirty point eighty two an ounce, which comes out to be thirty three percent above spot, and then we have over here. Uh, buyback price above spot, and um, I've never seen this before. Uh, have, have you ever seen this before, where they're buying back above spot? spot? Yeah, yeah. You know, I frankly I haven't ever looked at that number too often because I uh, over the course of my uh, buying and stacking career, it's mostly been buying. But um, right, so. I really hardly paid attention to the to the buyback price, but you know it doesn't make any sense that it would be uh, over spot hardly ever, and to any great ex in, in, you know to any significant amount would be un very unusual. And I think these are the you know this is you know you've got a magnet pulling up on right. all of these prices now because the right. the physical just won't go down far enough. But now you've got the you know the illegal paper shorting pushing the other direction. So this is like you know the war of the worlds going on right now. Right, I think it is the ultimate uh, desperation move by the bankers. And um, throughout the week, uh, people have been coming up with the um, scenario that um, the banks need to drop the paper prices to. Um, um, make sure that everyone knows that the dollar is the only way to go. The safest avenue is the dollar, which is a load of crap, but, you know, I don't listen to mainstream, but a lot of people do. So well, they want yeah, to for, Unfortunately, most people do, and they don't even, you know, most people don't even realize what's happening. It's such a slow phenomenon. They don't know. They yeah. Don't really know. Yeah. 
so what's happening is uh, that they dumped a whole bunch of paper on the, the silver and gold markets, uh, hoping that people will sell uh, their gold and silver so they can come in and scoop up the low prices. This is my um, my theory, and I think a lot of people out there would uh, agree. Yeah, I think the you know it's a combination of things. I think you've got uh, you know the real big players basically wanting the the dollar to look okay in the mess in the midst of this you know massive money printing, and then you've got uh, other sociopaths who are out there out for themselves completely and wanting to buy uh, silver and gold at prices that will be the last that we're going to be seeing this decade um, and right th they're simply in it to you know put as many of these uh, uh, as much real money as they can on their side of the table and uh, get people who don't know any better or who can't afford to continue to hold on uh, to get them to sell out, it's a shame, and it's and we all know the uh, you know the criminality behind it, but it's that's what it is. And I think people, if they can really uh, you know understand what's going on, they might be able to hold their silver physical, hold their gold physical a little bit longer than yeah. you know than they than they really their emotions telling them to. Well, if you look at the buyback price. It, yeah, the dollar is shaping, sh sh sinking ship there. <laughs> now that that is that is representative of debt. So uh, I hope everyone realizes that that is yep. nothing but a piece of debt. Okay, so just to rehash, the dealers are buying back silver above spot price. And that is totally different from a week ago. I have never seen this, and it's. I think that. Um, oh. Um, where? Well, I mean, the question is, what does it mean? I mean, tell us what you think that means that they're having to, that they're offering to buy back above spot. What does that mean? It means. It, I, well, to me, it means the comics is going to die. It is going to crash <laughs> and burn. Um, they can't. It's a desperation move, so they can scoop up gold and silver on weak hands, and um, it, it it just means that um, you know the BRICS is making an impact. Uh, inflation is making an impact. Um, well, so also probably. Me Go ahead. Well, they just can't keep hiding the fact that we are in trouble, and this but is. Doesn't it, also, doesn't, doesn't it also mean that they pushed the price down too far in all of their shenanigans? They've actually gone over the line in terms of manipulating the price low because they've come, they've pushed it below what the, the, the physical clearing price really is in the real wor world. And so they've got these phony prices that uh, if they'd been more careful, they could have kept themselves a little bit closer to you know reality. But they don't care. Um. No, they don't care, and I'm um, I'm not understanding why they would do such a thing, except for the fact that they know that there's no gold and silver in those comics uh, vaults. Well, if they're trying to get out a bunch of short contracts, is that what you mean? They're trying to they're trying to extricate themselves from some short contracts that they need to they don't want to carry forward in the next few months. Um. I don't know because they just dumped a whole bunch of more shorts on there. So they're not covering any shorts. They're just putting more on there. Well, they should be covering shorts, though I'm not privy to exactly what they did because, I mean, if you're going to smash the price down below a, a legitimate clearing price, you'd want to get out of your short contracts that maybe you had on at $30. If you could get yeah, out of them around. The, Go ahead. The, well, the price wouldn't stay where it's at if that's the case. If they covered their shorts, there would be a short squeeze. Momentum would shoot the price all the way back up to where it was. That right, hasn't but what happened. If they, but what if, you're saying that new shorts have gone on at the lower price, though. Is that what you're saying? It would have to be. Well, that's what I'm, I'm asking. They, I'm, 
Go ahead. Yeah, it, it would have to be because um, they they aren't using real money when they do this naked shorting. They're not using right. collateral. They're just using um, derivatives to um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, they're just they're they're lessening the impact of every time they do this. It's lessening the impact every time they do it. Uh, this time they did it ten times as bad. They they did ten times as much shorting, and um, it only. I mean, they didn't move the price that much compared to what they dumped. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some, it's some billion ounces or something. I don't know what it was. It was just a huge amount of ounces. Yeah, well, their their bang for their buck is is, is diminishing. We know that. And um, the problem is, is if they want to put a, a a paper price, you know, down at at fifteen dollars, I guess they can. But nobody's gonna, you know, trade physical well, yeah, the at that price. Yeah, the the dealers have already separated price from paper or yeah, physical that, from paper. I think that's that's the example from the AppMex story. Yeah, so this is the biggest uh, thing that happened all week. And uh, here's the things uh, on my site. You can find this little horse, um, metallic horseman. I'm not sure if that who that represents, but um, here's a, Andrew McGuire, the um, whistleblower from uh, J.P. Morgan. Um, is saying that LBMA default triggered gold and silver takedown, and then Jim Willie, leading up to the this week's fiasco, uh, said uh, that real physical price in gold soars to 2,000 an ounce in physical as the COMEX burns, and that's happening. Uh, the, in, the end game of the COMEX is what Jim Willie, this has triggered an end game for the COMEX, and then Andy Hoffman did an interview with um, uh, SGT report uh, stating that U.S. wholesale suppliers are now sold out of physical silver. So we have this huge delineation between the dollar, the dumping of the silver, uh, paper silver, on onto the COMEX, and, um, and then we have, you know, the Atmex buying above spot price. I mean, this is huge. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, they're, they're, everything is seeming to hit all at once right now. Where even if they, you said earlier that, that you thought they were going to take the price down to twenty dollars because of the, the way the chart was looking, right? Yeah, that was um, that was before the week's end. Um, now that I've seen what has happened during the week, uh -huh. all it's all it's created is another bearish pattern. And what's going to happen? I think that we're going to go below twenty, and um, we'll just uh, we'll just happen to see a bigger delineation between the physical and um, uh, paper prices. And it could very well um, if. if if this goes if this goes below twenty, this is what I think. <clears throat> if it goes below twenty on the paper price, um, there's going to be a huge sell-off in the paper, gold, and silver comex, uh, furthering its damage, and um, no one's going to be buying it back uh, because everyone's going to realize, well, this is this is a bunch of crap, you know. I'm not going to buy any more paper. I'm just going to go buy silver and gold physical, and it's just going to make it worse for comics. And then all of a sudden, we're going to have a different price um, for spot for spot prices. Well, and that's what's going to happen. I, 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 you, you, and I have, you know. A bunch of other people hope that's the case sooner than later. I mean, if we're going to see below $20, um, that's going to be quite interesting with regard to, you know, some of the mining shares and these types of things because they're going to be certainly following that around pretty well. 
I think I think Jim Willie is right. Um, it's the separation of this of this price between physical silver and paper has triggered a upcoming default on the COMEX. And what's going to happen is they're just going to take everyone's money. They're not going to apologize. So I think I think it's the beginning of the end of the COMEX. Everyone's going to lose their money that are holding GLD, SLV, any mutual funds. It's just going to disappear overnight. I think this is going to happen soon. So you, do you want to be like be crazy like all these other commentators and yeah 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 actually I am crazy. Give us a time and a date for this uh, no, no, to no. happen. No, no, no. I think I think if they keep printing and dumping and 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 doing as they're doing, it's not going to take very long. I, that, well, that's you, what I think. You, you mean sometime this year, sometime in the next summertime, or what is you, you, any any uh, any guesses you want to do, or you just want to put it out there? I think that it's going to hit real big trouble below twenty dollars on the paper price. But you think that's? But the way you look at the chart, that's going to happen within the next month or so, right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's not going to. It's at twenty three today. So it's not going to go back up to 30, then back down to, to 19. Um, because of its consolidation, I think we might see 25. But what they're going to do is it's going to hit that, re, uh, that resistance point at 25, and they're going to dump it again. Uh -huh. So that's what well, I think they'll do. If that happens, would you, do you think that that's going to be the last push down? Um, well, if it, 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 it go, let me pull up this chart again. Here we have the chart again. Let me pull up that magnifying glass so everyone can see. <clears throat> All right, so this this long trend line, this long trend line, this is. This is the balance point between um, bullish and bearish on the long-term chart. Mm -hmm. Okay, if if it get if it get below if it can go below this white line, I think that we will see a huge amount of selling. Mm -hmm. uh, because because then it becomes a long-term bearish pattern. Okay, this I'm is just. The last this is the last line of, of support right here, this line, at $20. But you still think it can pop up to 25 before it goes down to 20 Yeah, well, it's not that big of a... Let me, let me pull this out a little bit. It's not that big of a... It's just like right here. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. It, a lot, that's almost a lot like of, a. Go ahead. That's almost like a just a reaction uh, move higher yeah. before it goes down again. Well, uh, st stocks are elastic, and it's like pulling a rubber band. You pull a rubber band all, with two hands all the way across. It, you're for, it's forced to come back, and it's elastic. So what has happened is the price has gone pull, pulled out so far it has to come back to re, to relieve itself. So I I think it, I think we'll see this twenty five maybe, but but it's going to be following this trend line and if it goes below this trend line it is going to be disastrous for the comics. Now the physical price is already separated, and I can go sell uh, my silver to Atmex at twenty-seven dollars for an eagle. So, I mean, it's just horrible. I mean, that's that's all the way up here when it started to crash. Uh, yeah. That's the price. That's the price way up here, and and you know it's. Um, 
it, the, the COMEX has already started to default. This is this is the point that we that, that I'm trying to make. Okay. And Jim and Jim Willie is right. I mean, it's, I didn't come just, up with this. I didn't yeah. come up with this on my own. Well, <laughs> it's it's a numbers game that I think a lot of people have been looking for, but <clears throat> yeah, it's um. We, everybody's just been pretty much amazed at how long that they've been able to continue yes. to to yes. you know dump paper and and push it down. So, uh, but they're committed. I mean, they're backstopped by the by you know sovereign entities to yeah. make it happen. Taxpayers, yeah. Well, um, a, pr a printing have, machine. Have you heard of the newest? Um, trending term in the realm of financial banking. It's the bail-in. Have you heard oh, yeah, of the bail-in? Oh my gosh, yeah, the bail-in. It was, uh, when I first heard that, I go, what I go, the hell? I go, I mean, I, I'm an old boater, so bailing in is, uh, you certainly don't want the water coming in on you. Jeez, you're going to sink. Well, that's, that, that's, what it's, that's what they're uh, anticipating. Canada's already anticipating bail-ins. And they're writing legislation to have bail-ins, and all it means is they have the right to take your money when uh, the ass hits the fan. I know. Well, we we saw the bail-in in Cyprus. That was like the first time I ever yeah. heard that in my life. I mean, uh, but isn't it weird when you when some people go research these things, they find out that you know, like six years ago, they had some sort of white paper on bail-ins that nobody knew about. Right. You know? It's already there. They're just they're setting it up. Oh yeah, they they write these things. They stick it in a drawer somewhere at the uh, you know in Brussels, yeah. and say, "Oops, we need that uh, we need that bail in uh, paper, uh, guys." Right. All right. Now it's legitimate. Yeah, we're, All right. we're ready. So now. Okay, so this leads up to the fact that the everyone, uh, Jim Willie has stated, you know, this is this is the triggering of the comments default, and then we have legislation um, for bail ins in Canada. And in uh, the United States, for these bail-ins, because of uh, what happened in Cyprus, um, making it um, okay to steal everyone's money. And I want everyone to know they need to get their money out if you want to be saved. Yeah, it's really depressing that we're even talking about this because it's, you know, talk about, uh, you know, we've got some sort of, we have a soft fascism going on in the United States already, and then soft. And, and, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm comparing it to brutal fascism, you know. But oh, it's uh, pretty brutal. I know if you're paying attention, it is. I'm talking about when it's going to be obvious to everybody. That's unfortunately the way the path we're on. But um, you know, people right now are, uh, you know, everybody I know, uh, oblivious. They don't know. No. Not at all. Did we mention the fact that we need to watch that new gold movie? I think uh, we have not, but let's do a quick uh, advertisement for that. A, a brand new uh, movie, uh, or rather a documentary on the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation has just been uh, uh, broadcast, I guess, in Canada. And now they've put three or four different segments of that uh, documentary on uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to put that link up, and it's supposed to be, uh, you know, groundbreaking in terms of talking about the manipulation in the in the gold uh, market. I don't know if they talk about silver or not. I have to apologize. I haven't finished uh, watching it myself. But there it is on uh, the Gold Seek uh, website. But it's also uh, obviously on YouTube. The um, in the in the very first five minutes, there is they're already interviewing um, uh, uh, Embry. Who's and, that again? And also uh, Embry, the uh, oh yeah, uh, Embry, Sprott, yeah, Sprott, Sprott yeah. and Embry. They're interviewing both those guys at the very beginning, which are great. These are the heavy hitters in Canada and you know in most uh, precious metal communities. Uh, these guys are the kind of the real solid uh, commentators. They know what they're talking about. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's everyone's homework, right? And you got to watch this movie. Got to watch that video. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how much of an effect it's going to have in the markets, but it's great that it's coming out now. Right when we need some sort of good news like this, ex exposure, you know, shining the light on the bad guys is really one of the major things that, that we can do right now, besides having the COMEX crash and burn like you and Jim Rowley are predicting, you know? Well, I'm not really predicting it. It's just, it's inevitable it's as far as I can tell. No, uh, I agree. I think it, 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 they talk about a force majeure where there's not going to be able to deliver. That's, that's inevitable. I mean, yeah. Uh, there, there's uh, not enough cra cool. cra Yeah, crashing and burning literally is just kind of a fantasy, I think, that Jim Willie really has and the rest of us do, you know, where <laughs> we're, we're expecting to see something like the, uh, the, the uh, Texas uh, fertilizer mound, yeah. you know, that, that the comics will look like that, right? A, a big uh, going out with a boom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, <laughs> and there won't be, none of the guys who should be there will be there, right? Uh, I hope not. Okay, well, <clears throat> I think uh, we're going to have to cut it short here. I think that's I think all we needed to talk about. I mean, yeah, that's, that's unless you want to talk about domestic issues, ah, we can go on for, for days. Yeah, I th well, <laughs> I, I, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll, we'll, maybe we'll save that for, for next week if, if, uh, if <laughs> I'll create won't. another channel. Yeah, exactly. Then, then, then we won't be boring the, the, the metal people. Right. All right, so good to see you, Colin, and um, I hope that everyone out there uh, uh, likes our video. Uh, comment, share. Um, you can go to Gearology YouTube channel or the Rusty's Metals YouTube channel to watch this video. Um, also on Rusty'sMetals.com. And I um, hope everyone buys a shirt, a hat uh, from Gearology. Yeah, that's, a, that's a Gearology. Uh, it's... Uh Precious metals, silver uh, gear, and gold gear. Uh, four, uh, yeah. four gold bugs and silver bugs. Buy a buy, a, buy an old gold bug, silver bug. That's me. Yeah, and I, I hope that everyone goes to my site to to click on the link to purchase from you. So, <laughs> yeah, I bet you that's the way to do it. We all got to get these things connected correctly. Well, yeah, I gotta <clears throat> I gotta make a living somehow. I gotta sell your sell your T-shirt. <laughs> we, we all gotta we all gotta do our little bit here and keep uh, keep our stacks nice and high. Yeah, that's true. I want to I want to buy as much as I can before this um, uh, separation of the prices go any higher. That's uh, horrible. Well, that's that's the irony. You're not gonna be able to go anywhere and buy nineteen dollar an ounce silver. No, not at all. We already we already know that. All right, Colin. I, I wish you the best, and I'll see you uh, next uh, Thursday or Friday. All right, Rusty. Have a good weekend. You too.